good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on what time it is where you are in the world. Um, friends, angels, family of life. I have a story today, a message. And I actually took notes. I don't usually have notes that I go off of when I make my videos, but I'm going to refer to some today so I don't miss some things. Okay, this is a story about a dream, what it means, a um, little interpretation of that dream, and then it's going to talk about being a victim or not. Okay, my trusty notes, if I can read my writing. So this person had a dream they was being chased by a bull and there was an entire group of matadors present who either couldn't or wouldn't help him okay so let's look at that dream real quick um and this could be an interpretation of it you're supposed to interpret your own dreams okay but we're gonna just talk about this real quick because of the message we're gonna Go over afterwards so that would signify imply whatever that he is in a place where he needs to open he needs to invite in healing and he needs the tools um because we have fear and stuckness and blocks or whatever okay so the bull let's see here Okay, and in this particular situation, he has a person in his life, probably more than one, but that absolutely could help him and have tried if he was open to it, if he was open to receive it, to accept it, to acknowledge it. Um, but he isn't, for whatever reason. That's unknown. Okay, so um, He doesn't get it. He doesn't see it. He's not open to it. He's, I don't know, doesn't have an awareness. awareness. He's not acknowledging it, okay? Um, or if he kind of does, he likes not to use it. So let's talk about what the bull signifies. The bull signifies um, his life. Maybe he feels like it's, you know, sometimes it feels like we're hammered and it's out to get us, yeah? Maybe the life is too overwhelming in some ways and he doesn't know how to... I don't know. Okay, and then the group of people, the matadors, signifies all the allies, friends, support, family, or whatever uh, that are there that are willing to help him, but they can't um, because he doesn't allow it, um, doesn't open to it. So whether consciously or unconsciously, he gets to a certain point and then he plants his feet and he just digs in, right? And he refuses to accept the help that's out there that's all around him. Um, or to reach out for that. I don't know why. Um, and so it's frustrating for the people that uh, see it or that want to help him. But he won't allow them to. Okay, so it can culminate in a few ways. Number one um, is that he will eventually, through one of these people around him, do something to allow himself to open up to that help. Um but also realizing that it's in him and getting in touch with that and trusting it. That's hard for some people to do too. The other outcome would be that life takes charge and life presents a series of obstacles that would force him to change the path he's on or enable him to open up and accept the help. <laughs> Life's always placing obstacles in front of us. Who doesn't face them? Everybody does. And it's how we, um, oh, perception, how we perceive it, but our reaction, what's our choices to deal with it? And this is how we learn and grow and evolve. So if you block it because you're afraid of fear or rejection or pain or whatever, you got your arm up and you block it, then you're not growing, you're not moving forward. You stay stuck. So that is, the other option is that he would stay right where he's at and not open up at all and not accept the help um, and continue his journey the way he's been doing it, blind, deaf, and dumb. Which would be tragic because it seems like at some point in our lives, you know, we have tremendous amounts of potential. 
So I don't know if it's because this person is afraid of opening. Because he can't see it, hear it, feel it, touch it, whatever. Or uh, what it is is causing him not to progress any further. Um, and just not progress. It's just it's not a nice place to be, but it is choice. Okay, it's all choice. Um, okay, so talking about the fear of failure. Um, sometimes it's easier n not to move forward. This is going into what the victim thing is, um, and to not take a chance and potentially fail. But failure isn't even failure. Failure is learning. We learn from all of that. So look at it in a different perspective, right? Not in a negative perspective. Not let it keep you stuck. So maybe um, he feels that if he takes a chance, he might lose something again um, and can't handle that pain. I don't know. That's a guess. <sighs> failures are supposed failures, if that's the way you perceive it in life. Uh, that's tough because life presents obstacles to all. And I don't know if um, this particular person understands why there are obstacles. Okay. And why he or anybody, I'm just using this as an example for a story. Why anybody thinks that they're a victim. Okay. So if you, if a person won't step out and take action, um, there are so many ways or times that a person won't speak up for himself or anybody else or take action and it's sad um and like i said when their partner or friends try to help them and they can't it's frustrating for everyone okay so okay here's the victim thing that was leading up to this people often perceive themselves to be a victim okay if you are going to be a victim you will never progress past the point of wallowing in self-pity low self-esteem and depression um, it's not a very good place to be things happen in life to people okay birth death divorce it's how you perceive it um, and that goes back to the individual and the strength of their will and um, they either open up it can either open up and let the wound bleed and let the pain out and hopefully find a way to handle that um, so that they can at least stop bleeding, okay, so they can move forward. Or they can just continue to be a victim and not move forward and just stay there um, and wallow. And that's just not a good place to be because the outcome for that is never good at all. And being the victim adopting that role again this is a choice put you in a place where you don't have to move forward and it's an excuse it's stuck here um it's a weakness because um it's more comforting or comfortable to sit in one spot and have people console you or whatever um but also find other codependent people who like they want to sit there and blame everything and everyone else for their problem then they don't have to take responsibility for it okay other hurt people um that, that are satisfied with not moving on because of fear of failure or fear of rejection or whatever no one can fix this but the individual who's in the midst of this muck in this quagmire okay no one can't their loved ones can't do it for them they can open up and ask for the help, but that has to come from them. And they can't do it for anybody else but themselves. And so hopefully they try, um, this will bring um, an awareness and help that they need and that they deserve. Uh, but it takes steps. There's time layers. There needs to be acceptance, forgiveness, and trust. Um, and just wanting to be better and to get better. Um, and these things help us gain a new and much needed understanding of things. It's all about the lessons and the learning. So when something crappy happens to you, um, take a step back and sit with that, okay? And say, what did I learn from it? Because you learn from everything. So take the lesson um, and then 
actually thank it for what you learn from it. And that's when you need to let it go. Okay, and there's a lot of tools for letting go. And this is some of the other videos I've talked about pulling that energy out of you and getting getting rid of it. Visualization is powerful. Um, so if you feel like a victim, you don't need to stay there. Does it serve you? No, probably not. But you have to come to that realization on your own. So this is all about um, take charge of your life. Don't be a victim.